Think of the last time you realized how much you love something. That moment where everything's clear all of a sudden. That moment came for me in the summer of 2019 while I was at camp. I just started rowing the previous winter and intended to row for the rest of my life. I hadn't rowed in a few months when I saw a large rowboat pulled up on shore. It looked something like this. Now this was a large rowboat, large enough to fit two whole passengers in it. Normal single schools are tiny, usually smaller than the width of your hips, and around eight meters long. I'd never rowed in a single school. I'd only ever rowed with one oar and multiple people, but I asked the counselor if I could use their boat. Promised to wear a life jacket and stay inside the lifeguard, but could I please, please use the rowboat? She said yes, and I'm rushing down there, tears in my eyes. Now, some people may call me a crier, but I never cried over something like this. So in that moment, as I ran down, life jacket in arms, tears in my eyes, I realized just how much I loved rowing. Rowing is a truly amazing sport. Before I started rowing, the amount of physical activity I got was gym class and occasionally walking places with my family. I was that person in your gym class who could barely jog more than a few blocks and would walk the mile. Now, I row two hours a day, four to five days a week, and as reported in the Irish Times, rowing has been classified as the fifth most intense Olympic sport, which seems like a pretty big jump for someone who couldn't jog more than a few blocks a few years ago, but it's because I love rowing. I love the physical activity, and I love the path it's led me down, the journey it's taking me on towards working with my mental health. We've all been anxious before. Whether you call it stage fright or the feeling you get before a test, you've been anxious. It might happen a few times a day, a few times a week, or just in high stress situations. I have a diagnosed anxiety disorder. And when you have a diagnosed anxiety disorder, it's that feeling and so much more. If I had to give a percent of my day that I felt anxious, it'd be 20% on a good day, upwards of 60 to 70% on a bad day. And that can mean anything from shaking to shortness of breath, just inwardly spiraling. But when we have conversations, we all think between sentences, but I don't just think, I spiral. Spiral into what your last word was. What could your next word be? What could the word be after that? What do they all mean together? Till you say the next word and it starts all over again. Anxiety affects even my smallest decisions. I now run a Czech team where most people don't speak a lot of English. And although some of them have offered for me to help them practice their English, I know how I'd feel if our positions were reversed. This can lead to a lot of anxiety for me. In the winter, we had conditioning and sometimes I need to refill my water bottle. But what if they think I'm leaving and I can't say anything, the English would draw attention to the conversation and all of a sudden I have a bunch of people staring at me. So I don't say anything, just wait it out. But what is rowing? What is this thing that I love so much? Rowing is stressful at some times and relaxing at others. Rowing is six kilometers on a clear day, under the sun, flowing with the river with everything to think about and nothing, staring at the back of the person in front of you. When I row, I have to focus on a million things at once, which relieves me from my anxiety, from the burden of having to think about everything at once. When I row, I have to focus on keeping my arms and back straight, making sure I'm keeping tempo, keeping the boat set, following the rhythm, making sure I'm wearing arms, body, legs, legs, body, arms, arms, body, legs, over and over again. But rowing silly is just enough room for the little random thoughts to bounce around in my head repeating. Thoughts like, there must be some celebrity baby club where the leader has the weirdest name. Or, do the swans think I'm a giant swan? A little while ago, I was describing this to my therapist, and she simply said, that's meditation. Now, I do not like traditional meditation. Sitting, breathing, left alone with my thoughts, ugh. But she explained that meditation works because it gives you something to focus on that's not your deep, intrusive thoughts, while still leaving room for the calming, random thoughts. So when you find something you love that's difficult, but repetitive, it's meditative. It gives you something to focus on, while still well, calming down and moving through the motions. You can do what you love while calming down and thinking, but still focusing, focusing on the rhythm and the pace 
moving through the motions, ingraining your body, all while running out of breath and meditating at once. So rowing, working out, all of that, that must be great for my mental health, my anxiety, right? Even though it, even though it pushes my boundaries, it helps me mentally. It's a coping mechanism, but I can't row all the time. Probably don't want to row all the time. It's an intense physical activity. I have to go to school, eat, sleep, socialize, because I'm an extrovert, despite my anxiety. So how do I deal with my anxiety the rest of the time? Well, I've used rowing, my path towards greater mental health, and I've applied it to my everyday life. Rowing's taught me to be patient and focus on the minute details. It's taught me to be cooperative and work with others, to use my energy wisely, to evenly distribute it, to push through a bit of that healthy pain. While I'm out there, I have shaped my path um, towards physical and mental health, towards happiness on and off the water. But rowing is also a sport where you have to pull your own weight because if you don't, somebody else will, and then you're slow and you lose. This lets me use my anxiety to motivate me. If I suck, I'm gonna beat myself about it. But if I don't, I'm fine. I can use that fear of failure, use that anxious energy to motivate me, even if when it fails, it's detriment to my mental health. But rowing is also a welcome distraction on the nice steady state days. It's a welcome distraction from the anxiety that comes before and after. And welcome distraction from having to ask someone to help me get my single down from the top rack or waiting around to go back to the locker rooms as everyone chats and check. But rowing isn't only eight kilometers on a clear day under the sun, flowing with the, uh, with the river, with nothing to think about but the rhythm and the pace, the breeze in your face as the water flows by, taking your sweat and your worries away. Rowing is also the 2K race filled with screaming coaches and coxswains moving so fast you can barely feel the passing of time. The pressure, go, go, go. The most intense six to eight minutes, you know, where my anxiety combines with my adrenaline to create a powerful concoction that won't let me stop, even when everyone else has. Because I'm okay with blaming others when I know I've done my best, when I know I've pushed myself. Because when I'm not, then my anxiety will take that little bit of doubt and cut me to my core. I recently rode in the 2020 Prima Turkey, and we got fourth place in the finals, 0.47 seconds ahead of the fifth placers. And although that might not be great, when we were done, I felt like passing out and throwing up and my lips were numb. And so I knew, I knew I'd pushed myself to my limits till I nearly broke. And that's probably not healthy. I mean, sure, it's good to use what you've got, but what if it's a detriment to my mental health? Is it healthy to be putting myself into anxiety-inducing situations? Into situations where I'm purposely trying to create anxiety in order to fuel my physical activity? But if I hate every sport that doesn't give me anxiety, how will I ever be physically active? Will I resort to a sport like running, where I'll be unmotivated and hate every second of it and probably never do it again? And what's more important, your physical or your mental health? The answer is I don't know. The line between physical and mental health is one that I walk every day on my path, pushing my boundaries on my path towards working with mental health. But I've turned a block into a ramp. I've turned a block into a ramp on my path towards greater mental health, propelling me through my journey by using something I love, by using rowing. How can you turn a block into a ramp? How do you turn a block into a ramp using something you love on your path towards healthy living.